I'm going to uh, try to expand a bit on the previous subject then. Uh, uh, I'm, um, I intend to talk a little bit about mid kernel uh, and uh, a bunch of SSL libraries and one SSH library. <coughs> this is me. I uh, hack on the software, uh, mostly mid kernel related. Uh, I maintain uh, kernel, mid kernel, and libssh2 and uh, ca res and a few things. Please louder, Okay. <laughs> and I work with embedded systems during the day uh, as a consultant and I work for hacks. But I, I'm, uh, this is uh, what I uh, intend to try to cover. Uh, uh, I work with libcurl then primarily, that's possibly the project I spend the most time and effort in. I, I, I deal a lot with the TLS SSL libraries in that project. And I'm going to try to uh, touch the subject on why so many libraries uh, and how they differ, uh, why you pick one of them or why you don't pick a few of them, and, uh, why, and how the situation is with SSH libraries, and uh, why they are so few. So if you have questions, try to, uh, I'm, I'm all willing to uh, inter uh, get interrupted and uh, answer questions along the way. I think this is a pretty wide uh, so, of course, uh, I will be able to cover everything. So, if you have anything in particular, I'll leave out. So, ask. <coughs> I started CAR back in, uh, actually, before 1998, but I called it CAR 1998, the first release, and I made a library out of what CAR did in, in the year 2000. So, and, and the CAR speaks a few protocols these days. Uh, I think there are 19 if you count them like that. <coughs> it's, a, it's a pretty widely used library. Uh, we have uh, bindings for just about all languages I know, and even a few more. It's MIT licensed, or MIT X licensed, but it's very liberal. <coughs> When, when we did, or rather when I uh, started curl, we of course immediately uh, wanted HT, HTTPS support. And back in those days, uh, SSL was the only existing library. So, so back in those days, we started supporting uh, HTTPS already uh, since day one, or rather, I think, I think summertime 1998. Yeah. Powered by SSL. How do they pronounce that? <laughs> this is I don't know. That project turned into open SSL, as everyone knows, and, and we've been supporting uh, SSL powered by powered by open SSL since then. And of course, time moves on, and code grows, and you get a lot more features, and you get a lot more contributors, and, and of course, uh, new TLS grow grew and uh, became really good at some point uh, and uh, of course the contributors made code so that we could uh, do HTTPS with uh, GNU TLS instead of OpenSSL if we like that and then of course we supported more of these uh, protocols up on the line like FTP, SSL and, and later on there's a lot of more protocols using SSL and then of course we have these other uh, new contenders that are relatively new, at least yeah, SSL, uh, and, um, and they have this rather convenient, uh, very open SSL-like API, so it was very easy to yeah, SSL to be able to. And then um, I think uh, primarily because of Fedora, the Fedora project, have, uh, uh, they have, have decided to switch everything over to NSS from whatever they used before, and uh, that is usually turning code from OpenSSL to NSS. So we support NSS to the plan since 2007. And since uh, libcurl is, is uh, fairly portable, it runs on just about every operating system you can imagine. So uh, 
if you want to run on the OS 400 and you want SSL, of course you want the QSSL support <laughs> added in 2007. And then uh, uh, a few later, um, new cameras in the game, like the Polar SSL. Um, it's, uh, it's a pretty new library. Uh, they have been popular recently, and, uh, and of course, um, even more recently in our project at least, the AXTLS the library. So as you can see, there, there are a lot of SSL libraries here. Right? So why? Why seven SSL libraries? And I bet there are more than seven. Then we have support seven libraries right now. I bet we can find more if we just someone and uh, looking at these libraries they all have a, a um, fairly different feature set and fairly different focus and uh, ideas on, on what they should provide and, and they all have different uh, licensing ideas and development uh, uh, ways and, and I'll, I'll try to compare these uh, a bit to entertain you and uh, uh, give you an idea how, how it looks. <coughs> I, I, I do want to stress that I'm not involved actually in any of these SSL library developments and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a developer who uses this, I, I use these libraries from client side. I'm aware that uh, a few of these libraries have representatives in here and may have other ideas about these things that, I, that, I, that what I'll present here, but that's of course, that's not that's natural. And of course, I'm uh, willing to learn and uh, reevaluate my position. <coughs> OpenSSL is kind of the I would say the most used, most uh, popular SSL library in existence, uh, at least as a free and open source. It's very established. It has a lot of features. It uh, has a very... Uh, there's a lot of debate regarding the license, because the license is not GPL compatible, so everything that is GPL uh, has problems with uh, OpenSSL in why one way or another. Lots of, lots of GPL projects, they just hide for the problem. A lot of people have some kind of exception to the GPL for only for the purpose of OpenSSL. Uh, and, uh, well, it's a mess. Uh, it has a really quirky API. I believe it is mostly because it was made, uh, OpenSSL is kind of the same API as they had back in SSL back in 1998 and they haven't really made anything about it since. It's, it's not easy to program OpenSSL and, and the documentation is really... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a funny, uh, funny thing about uh, OpenSSL in, in the context of all these other guys is that they, they are pretty much the only library who leaves out the uh, common name and the subject opening verification from the library, so each application has to do this by themselves. And very recently we saw how, how that impacted the entire software industry when this common group think bug in the common name code appears. And, it, and suddenly you realize that there are 10,000 applications with the same error uh, that everyone more or less copy and pasted from everyone else. So everyone had to adjust that error instead of the single spot within the SSL library, as um, all the other libraries had the same bug, pretty much, but they could fix it at one spot. And OpenSSL, of course, is big. If you're doing a small embedded system, or or whatever, you, you may think that OpenSSL is a few megabytes to build. You know, for less, uh, in, in, in my timeline, of course, it came after OpenSSL because we supported this like, seven years ago. Uh, it's uh, it's um, primarily used because it's uh, quite a different license uh, than OpenSSL. This is LGPL, so it's uh, very uh, friendly to GPL, uh, the family of licenses. And um, 
it, it has a big, uh, sorry, it's a good, very good uh, documentation. And it's a very, I think, a consistent API. So it's, uh, it's a lot easier to get into writing a client doing SSL than it has a lot of the other, actually. Um, when I, <laughs> when I started to prepare for, for my uh, little talk here, I asked around about guys, uh, what do you say about comparing SSL libraries? Um, we support seven of them. What's your opinion about pro and cons and libraries? And I got some very strong emotions against you know, TLS, actually. And then that was mostly based on that it's using libgcrypt as default. I know they support others these days, but libgcrypt, uh, obviously, I haven't really researched this, but they have uh, problems with uh, running as different user IDs or whatever. There's a lot of bug reports in the Hub and uh, all over the world. Exactly. And it's has done. It, it's a, a library, it, it, of course, as everyone else, it comes from uh, Mozilla and Firefox and Thunderbird or whatever. I don't know exactly use it first, but it's derived from there, so it's a Mozilla project. They have a completely different idea about how to uh, get certificates and stuff. They have this database-oriented look on the world. So um, for us who have uh, originated as uh, OpenSSL users, we tend to look at certificates and stuff as files, PEM files on your disk loaded, but you don't do that with NSS. They don't even support loading PEM files from disk. <coughs> which is very quirky when you do the transition. And in the Fedora project, of course, they solve that by doing a fine patch that actually can load and files from this. But the NSS project have accepted that after four years. <coughs> it's very Firefox and uh, Mozilla focused. It's, it's so focused on, on only those projects. I mean, it's not, it's not that it isn't used. As I said, Fedora is, is changing to use this all over, so there's, there are many projects using NSS now. But the developers and the mindset in this project is very much focused on Firefox and Thunderbird, to the extent that if you're suggesting new features and ideas, uh, a lot of um, resistance will appear that, well, Firefox and Thunderbird, they don't use this. What do you, what do you need SRP for? We have no interface for SRP. Even though there are, I mean, potentially hundreds of applications out there who could use it. What is SRP? SRP is a, a TLS authentication protocol. Excuse me. Is, is NSS still active with the Is it very active? Yes, NSS is very active. Yeah, they're, 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 a, they're a big pro project and they move along like uh, all of the other big ones. Well, it's not only Firefox focused, but also on some servers because it had history with Netscape servers and Oracle and Red Hat and are still using it in their server products in, in legacy, in older products and also um, for example Google Chrome uses it too for yes, uh, yeah, edge I, labor. I, I, yeah, I know yeah. a lot of other users but yeah, the, right. the, the impression mm. I get when I communicate and I read stuff on their side it, it's mm. the impression I get is that they are very focused on these projects yeah. and, and just look at their website, where is it? Mm. It's, it's like a long, multiple slashes under Mozilla slash blah, slash blah, slash slash NSS and the yeah. entire left column on their side column, this has nothing to do about NSS there are links all over their site it's actually another reason why the documentation is hard to get to on NSS because it's hard to navigate on the site. And, and also they have this uh, uh, OpenSSL disease that they have a lot of functions that don't have documentation at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned QSSL before, so that's why it becomes seven, but it's actually not very interesting to most people because if you run OS 400 on an AS 400, it's interesting, but if you don't, it's not interesting. And I don't. Uh, yeah, SSL is... Uh, we've used it in our project uh, with using... They have a, a OpenSSL API, and that's very handy because it's very easy to move code that uses OpenSSL to use yeah, SSL instead. It's very fast to just... Uh, 
support it to use that instead. Um, it has uh, a GPL license, so it's uh, uh, friendly to GPL projects. Uh, the problem I've had with it is that, yes, it emulates uh, the uh, OpenSSL API, but it doesn't quite work as the OpenSSL open API. So I've had problems with actually getting it to work exactly like OpenSSL. Uh, I've had uh, and also, therefore, you, you kind of end up in the, in the weird OpenSSL problem then, because OpenSSL is not very good document. So when someone emulates that API, you kind of inherit the problem with the documentation. There is also, uh, th this is a project without the, the huge developer community and, and uh, awareness. I mean, I mean, you can find a lot of people discussing the SSL or developing online. <coughs> Polar SSL is, is uh, in many aspects from a user's point, uh, point of view uh, very similar to YASSSL. This is a, another, I should mention that about YASSSL, that's focused more on embedded systems because it's, it's smaller. And, and Polar SSL has basically have, seems to have the same idea. It's focused on embedded systems. They have a dual license system where you can download the GPL version and use it, and you can buy a commercial <coughs> licensed version for, for your. And um, Polar SSL in, in, uh, uh, is not very much used. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's getting more popular. So I see more and more projects like OpenLDAP and, and others who embrace this very much. But I uh, don't think we've had a, a, that long track record to actually tell how it will run. <coughs> and then we come to AXTLS. This is the, the, the newest one in the family. This is, has been around for a while. This is developed by one guy. Uh, and he's been doing it for, I think, five years. It's uh, by far the smallest library. It only does TLS. And it's, uh, it's not very good documented. And it has had a lot of problems all the way since I even started trying to get it to work. Now it's, it works it's seemingly very good. And uh, it's not, but it's not widely tested, and it's certainly not uh, any big community or or anything around it. <coughs> His, when I asked him about the comparison about some of the other libraries, I, I, I shouldn't quote him, but he said some, something about that he would cry if any of the other libraries were bigger, you know, smaller <laughs> than his. <laughs> <coughs> so, if you, you can always learn uh, feature for feature what, what is important in an SSL library for you if you want to use it in, in a project. Um, is it important that your uh, GPL um, compatible or is it on the, uh, on the contrary important that you're not GPL licensed? Uh, there are of course different use cases for different teams. Uh, there, there are things, uh, specific features like do you need TLS SRP? Um, and that's basically just the new TLS, I think, that supports it. Uh, do you need TLS 1.2? Or, 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 or the opposite, do you need anything else? And the SSL v2, uh, an old and an extinct thing, but some people still use it. Do you need it? Uh, in, the, in the back again to the Fedora project who, who picked uh, NSS for everything, they picked. They, they picked NSS for a reason, and that, that's because NSS is licensed, registered, or whatever it is to do with the, this FIPS 140. It's a kind of a US certificate for doing business with the government, or whatever it is. So if, if that's important, yeah, you need a library that's FIPS 140 certified. <laughs> and then, of course, then there's the ones uh, with embedded focus. If you need a small library, you need a it read on some of the big ones. And uh, I, um, if you need to run a Windows, of course, that might also be an issue to consider because I don't think it will run Windows. So, okay. How do we support them? It's not really, it's not really that hard. I mean, to explain or to understand. How, how do you, as an open source project, support a lot of different versions? Yeah, we have an internal API, of course. All our libraries implement these functions. And if all libraries just provide these functions, 
and when the, we set up, create a connection with SSL, they just uh, create the <coughs> functions to deal with sockets, like reading or writing. <coughs> I'm moving ahead a little faster because I'm going to run out of time. Uh, so, yeah, it's really not, not that hard to actually write the code that supports seven libraries. The, the hard part, of course, starts with how do you maintain that it actually continues to work in, in the long run. And, and that's a problem, of course, that all the open source projects get with whatever they do. And, and uh, in, in curl, we have a, ri a ridiculous amount of build options. So we have this problem all the time. So just adding another library doesn't really matter to us. It just gets <coughs> so we do. Uh, we try to do uh, test cases, and we do to, and we do this constant uh, distributed testing. So we have a lot of volunteers running various weird operating systems, and we have a test script, and then just updates from Git, run a lot of builds, submits back the results, non-stop doing that. <coughs> and of course, it doesn't cov uh, cover everything, but uh, but it's a start, and the, and the, we, of course we always depend on volunteers to do. To set up machines and uh, do tests and stuff. So, SSH, SSH libraries are quite not the same, and uh, and then I'm just based on the amount of libraries that exist for SSL and the maturity in SSL libraries. As I said, they existed back in 1996 or whatever, 95 when they started. The the for for low-level C implementations, there are really only two SSH libraries, and none of them, LibSSH and LibSSH2, none of them are very mature or have existed for very long. And in comparison, they're very rare. <laughs> they're not used at all uh, as much. Possibly then because SSH2 is a much less used protocol, as Aris mentioned before. <laughs> We pick LibSSH2 to base our support because we support SCP and SFTP in the curve. And we, and we picked it basically on, on two factors. We wanted a, a license that was not GPL or LDPL. And we wanted the non-locking operations. <laughs> right, and we want the, the, the EPA <laughs> side. And this kind of, um, it's become a kind of a tradition among all the SSL libraries that you, the application does the actual connect, handle the socket, and then tells the library about the socket, and then the library then can handle it. So that was also an important factor for us to, when we pick the library that we wanted, we wanted that kind of mindset. There are a lot of SSL libraries. There aren't that many SSL libraries. That's a lot of work. It's always a lot of work. <coughs> and uh, that's a little uh, web page. I, I tried to start um, to actually compare SSL libraries from a client side, from my point of view. But I hope to get more feedback on this one over time. Of course, comparing stuff is always a, a bit hard, and you get it's not just objective comparison. You have to actually some own personal. Well, that's about it for me. I have a question: Have you have you considered uh, uh, kind of exporting the uh, core SSL library as an Uber SSL library application writers could use, so that they could actually switch the actual SSL implementations? Or is it is it like a separate library, or it's an internal library, or? And now, uh, yeah, I've considered it. But no, it's, it's not an internal library. I just have an internal API. So all my, inter all my code internally uses the same fixed API. But my API is very uh, limited and focused only on the functionality that my library needs internally. So, and, and I know exactly, since I maintain like three libraries already, I know the pains. If I was going to release this as a library to, to work, it would be a lot of work. And, and maintaining a library is. Uh, it's tiresome and energy consuming, <laughs> and okay. I, it's enough already. <laughs> One more question. Uh, for what it's worth, glib is starting to do that, to abstract API, and 
have it so that multiple SSL libraries can be used through it. My question was, um, do you feel that the, what you've gained out of supporting so many SSL libraries is better than just sort of sticking to one? Is that something a lot of people should do? It, uh, excellent question. But, um, I, ha I haven't really thought about it, because in, in my world it's about all the users who want different things, and either you just say, no, you can't have it, or you say, well, if you bring the code, we can do it. And, and in, in my case, it's much more often the latter one. So I said, yeah, if you do the code, if you actually provide the entire port, then sure, we can support it. But of course, it, it gets more work. But, uh, but I think the, the, the upside is that you actually find more you actually fix the code better if more people use it, even if they use it with different backends. And usually, also, you can uh, debug stuff better with, since you can switch backends. And you see, that does the bug still exist when you switch backend or not? But then you actually know if it's the backend's fault or if it's my fault or whatever. Okay. Time's up. Thank you.